move on to uh, May, to um, chemical approaches for making biocompatible graphene oxide. Uh, so, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is May. I'm a PhD student at King's College London. Uh, is actually my PhD supervisor, so you have seen some of our work in the lab uh, in the previous presentations. So, my following talk will be focused on the synthesis of double uh, clickable graphene oxide for biomedical applications, because my personal interest is how can we uh, change the surface property of the graphene oxide using the chemical modification and, and see if that cause any change to the biomedical implications. So the talk is divided into three parts. The first, I will give a little bit of the background. And the second, I talk about how I synthesize and correct the material, because the graphene is not really like small molecules that you can do MMR and just figure out what's the structure of the material. And then in the end, we uh, have a brief look at the toxicities of the synthesized material. So let's start uh, from background. So you have heard of uh, two graphene talks in the morning, uh, but I think the best way to have an idea about what graphene is is actually by looking at it. So this is a TM uh, image like, like, that I took like two years ago, which shows uh, a lot of graphene sheets covering uh, bacteria. So we know bacteria is already small, so, so the, the length of bacteria is roughly like two micron, with a width of a half micron. But if you look at the scale of the graphene oxide cover on the bacteria, it's actually really, really thin, almost like a transparent sheet covering on it, with a thickness around just one nanometer. So it is a very, very uh, thin material. It's actually one of the thinnest man-made material uh, so far. It's also a 2D material, which is a large uh, surface area to weight ratio. On the other side, I'm interested in, in Cape Country. Uh, but the reason is, is uh, by orthogonal chemistry, you can use it for uh, bioconjugation. What it actually says is the reaction can happen in mild condition, for example, in water at room temperature. Uh, for reaction that can be ha uh, happening in this condition, which means you know, it's not sensitive to uh, common fun functional group in the biomolecules, for example, you have amine, carboxyl, hydroxyl, which is not likely to interact with them. On the other side, the functional goal that we have on the material, if it's not fully saturated by fertilization, uh, it will not interact with any known uh, biochemistry uh, process in the living cells. And so that's why I'm interested in, in uh, clay chemistry. So there's been reported in the literature that people have tried to tripod click the fullerenes. So the first and second click, they've done it by the copper catalyzed acyl alkyl sulfur addition, and the third one is by cell alkyl coupling reactions. But work, it was a fully chemical work, and it didn't test any toxicities. Also, the material is not water dispersible, so it's a very pilot study here. And later on in the years, uh, people have tried to use click chemistry on graphene materials, but before we started the project, there was only one paper using the graphene with alkyl to click some water soluble. Uh, polymers and use it to deliver anti-cancer drug. Uh, so we think, you know, since no one is really looking into what happened here, so we, we think we can, we can make graphene, we can make it clickable, and maybe we can make it double, even triple clickable. The other thing, uh, what I like about click chemistry here is the solvent we use. As I mentioned, we can use it in water. So this is a very famous paper published a few years ago talking about the disp dispersibility of the graphene in solvents. As you can see here, most of the solvents are, it's not compatible with the graphene. So bear in mind, the material we are working on is 2D material, which means we need a surface area to show the advantage of the material. So if the material is not stable in any solvent, you want to do any reactions, which means you cause aggregations and you lose the surface then you're not really fully functionalized the surface. So to do the reaction, you really need a, a solvent system that the material is stabilized in. So in this regard, we started the project for graphene, and we want to use clay chemistry and do the reaction in water. So this is the material design. Uh, as you, we heard from Sandra, the size is important, so we want to synthesize the graphene, uh, hopefully in a large scale, because as Kuro mentioned, the yield is always a problem when synthesizing materials. And we, later on, we want to introduce the acyl and alkyl, so you can do two uh, copper catalyzed acyl alkyl sacral additions. So that's material we call the crack to graphene oxide. But bear in mind, like the 
uh, the outcome is actually you can also do the outcome and style click reactions, and the style can also react with the outcome on the graphene, so it's actually you can do triple click reactions. But here today, we only talked about the double click graphene oxide. So hopefully we can reduce the size and enhance the functionality using click chemistry. So how do I make the material? So first we start with synthesize with, of the graphene oxide. Uh, the method we use is actually a two-stage oxidation method. So traditionally, uh, the method only involved the second part, which is the modified Hamas method. Uh, but we introduced the pre-oxidation stage on the graphite to make it like uh, slightly oxidize it before we do a full exfoliation of the material. So uh, the old method we, we do, the yield is usually less than 10%, but this method we, we do, the yield is quite good. So if we if I start with, usually the normal battery is 4 gram of graphite, and I start with 4 gram, I can end up with 5.5 gram of graphene oxide, which is massive if you compare to the old uh, method. And from the uh, elemental analysis, we can see the descending of the carbon contact when, throughout the uh, oxidation stages. So in there, if you want to figure out how much, what's the yield by how much carbon was recovered in the graphene oxide, then the yield is roughly 56% of the carbon was recovered. And we use the thermographic uh, analysis, IR and Raman spectroscopy to correlate the material, confirming we have the property of the graphene oxide. Then we look at the size. Uh, the size reduction is simply done by uh, sonication, by prolonged sonication, as you can see in the TEM and the AFAN, the size was reduced to uh, nanometer ranges. Then we want to uh, introduce the first clickable functional group, which is the alkyl. The reaction was performed using the epoxide uh, ring open reaction by sorting A side. So it's a very, very simple, it's also one of the click reactions. So the ring was open and what you get is a one, two acid alcohol. And the result was confirmed by using the IRN, Raman, and uh, starting the hydrogen thing. So in panel A, you can see the appearance of the A side peak around 2100 after you introduce the A side. And because it's a ring open reaction, you have a have a hydroxyl uh, forming, so you also see an enhanced uh, hydroxyl peak on the IR. Uh, panel B, because the ASA doesn't give strong Raman signals, so the Raman spectrum doesn't seem to change. And then to confirm we really have the, the, uh, the ASA, we perform the starting and hydrogen assay. So on the bottom right, there's a normal hydrogen assay used to detect of amine. Uh, in either case, we don't have amine in our, our uh, control and the material, so the supernation was clean. But the A side can be reduced into amine uh, using transmetal phosphorine, and then you perform the nihydrin assay right afterwards. Then you can compare to see if you really have the A side on the material. As you can see here, for sorting A side and the graphing uh, function of the A side, this, uh, the test was positive. So, how do we know the A side is really bonded on the graphing instead of we, ha we haven't purified the material enough? Uh, it's actually quite simple because the, the A side peak of the free one and the bonded one had it actually has a two different uh, peak positions. So if you see the two peaks, you know you're not washing the material enough to get a nice and clean material. So we know we have the A side formation, uh, we know we can purify it, and then we uh, check uh, the somewhat decomposition profile of the material. So graphene and the graphene A side, they all have four dif different uh, decomposition ranges. And for the one functionalized with A side, you can see the higher decomposition is range one and three. In range one, it's mainly because of the decomposition of the A side, of course, the release of nitrogen. And range three is coming from the uh, hydroxyl groups. The second step was uh, to introduce the alkyl. Uh, what we use is a TMS protective propagate alcohol, and we use the stagolage hysterification to the conjugation on uh, the carboxylic groups. So this is actually a, a responsive uh, bond, so because it's, it's an Easter bond, so it can be cleaved on the low pH, which can be also changed to something like amide bonding, so that the, the material will not, the bond will not be easily cleaved in biological environment. But here we want to see uh, how, how the system behaves in this kind of design. Uh, again, we check the IR, but uh, the alkyl doesn't have a strong IR signal, so you can't really see what's happening here. Uh, usually for, for small molecule with alkyne, you have a strong uh, Raman signal, but unfortunately here it's shown by the graphene, we cannot see it. We can only see the differences in, in the thermal decomposition profile. Uh, the decomposition ranges uh, reduced for four different ranges into two. So it appears like a conjugating or shielding the carboxylic group with uh, propagate alcohol since to stabilize the material. 
So we want to uh, check the toxicity studies of the material that we synthesized. Because uh, ideally, we want the material, the reason we want the functional group, we want the functional group to be, hopefully, it will remain similar about compatibility as the study material. And if before we after the trick reactions, hopefully we don't see much uh, toxicity is being introduced due to these chemical modifications. So first we look at the graphene, graphene azide and the double clickable graphene azide at a concentration between 10 microgram per mil to 100 microgram per mil at 24 and 72 hours. Uh, in brief, we don't see any significant change in cell availabilities in these cells. So we are testing with the AFFONA cancer cells. And also you can see from the, from the, from the uh, images, uh, the more we functionalize the material, the material seems to uh, associate uh, with the cell strongly. Uh, as you can see here, the cell is not, not detached from the plate and the material are highly concentrated associated with the cell. But this is like my so I cannot make conclusion about the uptake. But the interaction seems to be stronger when we do the modification. And to really test the uh, performance of the material, I synthesized the targeting uh, peptide modified with alkyne, uh, which is called the ANG. And, and I also have a uh, by ASI pack to, to perform the second click reaction. And in both reaction, I include the control. The first one, I do the click action without the peptide. And second one, I just mix with the PEG to see if we have a non-specific absorption of the PEG on the material. And in the IR, we can see after the first click, we can see a reduction of the ASIP indicating the reaction is happening. And we also see the appearance of the AMI1, AMI2 bond in IR spectrum, which is coming from the, from the peptide with the just click on. And for, for the PEG, once you have it on the material, you can see the CS stretch coming out from on the spectrum. And for the thermography analysis, you can see the degradation profile coming in, starting from for the 80 degree. And those results we don't see in the control studies, so which confirm we really have the two material click on the materials. And this is how they look after the click reactions, so they still behave like graphene. And we, again, we tested on AFF on our cells uh, on the three concentrations. Uh, we only found toxicity on the graphene click only with the, uh, with the peptide at a higher concentration at, uh, at 72 hours. This is most likely due to the peptide is cationic, is causing uh, toxicity response in the cells. Uh, but because we also do the peculations after peculation, uh, which kind of shield the peptide, so we uh, reverse the cell variabilities in the end. So to conclude, we uh, make the graphene oxide from graphite in large scale with good qualities and we can reduce the size by sonication. We introduce the ESI and alkyne on the graphene material and we perform a further two functionalization of the, of the material under mild condition in water. And the material we synthesize also seems to be biocompatible, so which make it a good candidate for further uh, biomedical applications here. And in the end, I want to say thank you to my supervisor, Dr. Kula Jamo, uh, Professor Robert Heider, and uh, Professor Sophie Benzo, and all other friendly members in my lab. Thank you. Thank you. So I have uh, two synthetic questions. So about uh, why you choose uh, esterification to graft your triple bond on uh, on the graphene mm -hmm. instead of using amide linkage? Because amide linkage has a better yield normally. Have a better yield. Yes, uh, it depends on do you want to release the carbon. So we also have the linker, which is a one is amide. So you form amide bond, which will not be cleaved. Uh, we also have the compound, which is not shown here. So uh, we have the option to choose the bonding we, we want to put on the molecule. Okay. So in this case, this is the bond. So when you have the, you have the material click on it, uh, this is really hydrophobic. But you know, there's something we don't know yet is what if later on when the material entered the cells in the last song, for example, and the, the bond was clipped and we review the carbon group again and make the material more hydrophilic, what does it cause the change to the material? We don't know yet. But, so that, but that's something really interesting we can look into in the future. Okay. And the second question is uh, why you don't use a solid enamel to uh, have an idea about the rate of... Uh, I'm sorry, what I used why, to... why, why you don't use uh, enamel, solid enamel? Oh, solid enamel. Yes, that's also one of the options. But uh, I only have a few pilot studies on solid enamel. 
Uh, it doesn't seem very successful once we functionalize it. So it works for graphene oxide. Okay, so you can have a spectrum for it. But once we functionalize it, we haven't optimized it to get a nice spectrum. So that's why we don't have the data to present it here. But if you uh, uh, have any advice on how to do the solid MMR on these materials, well, we are more than welcome to have a discussion and see how we can do it in a different way. <laughs> I guess that's it. And I think you're all, uh, we still have more sessions in the other room, so you're free to um, move on to the next session. Thank you very much. Thank you.